I opened my hardcore Minecraft server to 100 players to see what would happen if they were placed on an island with the goal to survive for 100 days. But since this place has no rules, it wouldn't take long before people started turning against one another. Meaning that teams would grow, fortresses would be built, players would form a hierarchy, and many people would die. The only problem is, as well as power hungry people, this island is full of hostile creatures and a challenging terrain, meaning that surviving 100 days was not going to be easy. So sit back, relax, and get ready to join me on my adventure through 100 days in a tribal civilization, where it all started on day one, when we all spawned on a small island just off the coast. Even though this world was hardcore, PvP would be disabled for the first 20 days to allow people to have a fighting chance of survival. So these first few days were very important to establish a group of people that you can trust to protect each other over the next 100 days. Some people rushed straight for the mainland. So after gathering a few pieces of wood myself, I joined them. As soon as I crossed the river, I spotted one of the many tigers that ruled this jungle. But luckily this place was dense, so I was able to slip away easily. My goal for the first few days was to try and distance myself from all of the other players to allow me to gear up and get prepared to defend myself if needed. But due to my Discord server, some players before the event had started agreed to team up, meaning that I was already on the back foot against a group of people. So I wasted no time getting some resources to help my progression. Some players had already hit the mines and started gathering stone and iron, so I had to catch up. And as I ran deeper into the jungle, day one came to an end. Day two started great. I found a cave in this forest allowing me to get some iron, which is definitely going to come in use later. So after I completely cleared out this cave, I moved back out into the forest, gathering wood and adventuring into the night once again. I still had to be very careful since everywhere I went, hostile creatures were around me and PvP against those was not disabled. Somebody's already been here because that piece of wood was missing. Oh, oh, my, there's a bear right there. I, oh my, there's another one. There. Okay, get me out of here. I could hear him growl. I'm just going to run. But as I continued exploring this island all through day three, I finally spotted a player in full iron armor. He was alone and after a quick chat, we decided to team up. He was in full iron armor already, so I knew that he would be a great teammate to have. We agreed to search for an area to set up camp, and after a few minutes, we found this huge tree that was perfect. So as the night passed by, we hollowed out this tree and turned it into our living area. This gave me the opportunity to cock up my iron and craft myself some protection. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough iron for everything I needed, so I had to make a quick trip back underground. But after I got a few more pieces of iron, I headed back up on day 7 and left the treehouse to solve a quick problem. We had no food, and before we started starving to death, I set out to grab some seeds that we could use to make a farm with. But, as I was cutting away at the grass, my teammate told me that a solo player was just walking past our treehouse. So I decided to take this opportunity to stalk him to see where he was going. He arrived at this huge village. We had no idea if this place had already been claimed by a team or not, so we were super careful when checking it out. We snuck around the side and spotted a few name tags and even a fully armored player. It was at that point we realized that we were outnumbered by the players inside of this village. But this village was only one of many. All over this island, small teams had started popping up already and some real bases were starting to be built. And now most clearly, this one. We had no idea this village even existed until a few minutes ago, so before we got caught, we snuck away into the night and headed home. Day 8 was a strange one. As I was setting up the farm outside, we were approached by a player with nothing. He asked if he could join our team and since he was alone, after a quick talk, we decided to take him in and expanded our team now to three players. We got this guy armored up and then decided to head out into the wild. With only a short period of time left before PvP was enabled, we wanted to explore this island as much as possible and learn about all the other teams before we could be killed doing so. So we ran for a long time, all through the day and the night. Eventually, we spotted a campsite in the distance. So as the sun cracked and day 10 started, we approached this place to see what we could find. Oh, they've started building a wall. Watch out, there might be people walking around here. This wasn't a campsite, but more of a compound that a huge team was starting to create. A team that would eventually prove to be deadly on this island. This team was big enough to the point where they actually hosted an election to put someone in charge of their team. So, as president, I can lead us to conquer this entire server. As president, I would be able to give you guys not 
only iron and diamonds, as well as I can lead a war effort on the locations of two enemy bases that I've already found out. So as leader, I will also help us to build our great nation. Yeah, they hosted an election. I I don't even know what to expect from this server anymore, but I'm just I'm just here to enjoy it. Let's carry on with the video. But once we climbed this tree, we had a perfect overview of their base and was able to look at some of the things they were doing, which after a while turned out to be not much. So, before they spotted us and we had a target on our backs, we dropped out of this tree and escaped into the swamp. We realized if we were going to be up against tribes with way more members than us, we would need some much better armor to give us the edge in combat if it came to that. So once we arrived home at the treehouse, we all dived underground in the hunt for diamonds. We found a load of diamonds on our mining trip, and as we explored the caves, we came across something completely new. A huge mineshaft filled with ores. This was a great find, but this was not the only mineshaft in the world, and one of the other ones had already killed players. These two players were a part of the large team that lived in the compound, and as two of the first deaths on the server, their team decided to host a funeral for their fallen soldiers. Uh, I'd like to say a few words on behalf of the fallen. Uh, this was so recent that I didn't actually get time to prepare anything. Both of these, they will be missed, so um, amen. Whilst they were busy hosting a funeral, we stayed in the mines loading up on diamonds and iron until day 16 when we returned to the surface. We cooked up all our iron and were even able to make some helpful weapons like a diamond bow. And to make sure that we could use this, on day 17 we went out on the hunt for chickens so that we could make some arrows. As we were out hunting, we spotted another village just on the coast that we had never seen before. And as we approached it, we were careful to make sure that nobody was living here since we were getting really close to PvP being enabled. This place looks clear. I don't see anyone. There's quite a lot of animals and stuff, like food and houses, but this like, I don't see any players. So let's see what we can grab from here. This place was empty, not a single player in sight. We took this opportunity to search through every house to see what we could find. And after realizing that this place had villagers as a team, we decided to move into this place and turn it into our own compound. If we wanted to compete to survive for 100 days on this island, we would need to challenge the other teams and seem strong. So we started moving in. One of the first things on our agenda was setting up a wall. This village was big, and our competitors had a wall of their own, meaning that they were expected to be attacked at some point. Which meant so should we. I grabbed a load of stone from underground and started working on getting the wall built. After a few days of work, the base of the wall was complete, allowing our team to stay protected. But something that would keep us even more protected would be diamond armor. And it was time to put our diamonds to use. So I finally crafted up some diamond armor and started trading with the villagers in this town to get some XP to enchant my new armor set. As expected, after trading with the villagers for a while, I ran out of wood, meaning that I couldn't make any more sticks to trade. So I decided to head over towards the spruce biome. Over there were some huge trees that I would be able to chop down and trade to the villagers. So I pulled out my axe and got to work. That was when, out of nowhere, an unknown player arrived. He was in full diamond armor and ran up on me. Oh! Oh, there's a player! Whoa, 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 who the hell is this? He's in full armor, he's just trying to run up on me. Stay away from me! Did that hit him? I'm not sure. He's running. Is he on his own? He's coming back. Okay. I, uh, I don't know where to go. Can you guys come and help me, please? Head over towards me. I'm in the, I'm in the spruce area. Oh my, he's chasing me. Can you, please, hurry. He's trying to kill me, I think. I had no idea if this guy was alone or if he had a whole team behind him. So as I ran away, I called the team for backup. When they arrived, we chased him down. But after a while, he ran to the river and crossed over to the jungle. This was risky since we didn't know if he was leading us to a trap or a huge group of people. So we decided to let him live and turn back. Right, let's just leave him. I've hit him a few more times there. I don't know which team he's a part of. I've not even seen him once. We may as well just head back. But he's gone into the jungle, so we might have to go check that out in a few days. When we arrived home, I saw the progress that the team had made whilst I was gone. Our wall was starting to look serious and our kingdom was really growing. But since we passed day 20, PvP was now enabled, and people seemed to be out for blood. 
and if we wanted to survive the entire adventure, we would need to start watching our backs. Alright, let's grab the last bit of XP, and then go up here. Finally, we can enchant. So let's take this armor off, we go helmet first. Unbreaking 3, okay. Protection 4, we'll grab that. Nice. Okay, that's a really good chest plate. What about leggings? Protection 4 as well. Yes, please. Unbreaking 3, doesn't look great. Respiration 3, uh, let's try the halberd. Nothing incredible. Let's go for the helmet again. Respiration 3. Oh, protection 4. That was perfect. Wow. Okay, so we got... Let's just line this up here. Let's grab the chest plate. We've got protection 4, protection 4, protection 4. We just need to do the boots. Day 30 marked the start of a brand new journey. All three of us left our campsite and headed back into the wild. That player that had attacked me on day 25 was still out in the world somewhere, and we wanted to take care of him to make sure he didn't try to kill us again. But all three of us leaving the base was something that we would soon come to regret. On our search, we ran into a load of bears that started to attack us, but once we cleared the path, we spotted another house in the distance. Again, carefully we snuck up to this place and made sure that nobody was inside. And once the coast was clear, we made a run for the door. Even though this place was deserted, there was a load of helpful loot inside of here that we could use, such as food, saddles, and gold. Once the house was empty, we hopped in some boats and headed over to the lake to another house. Like the last one, this place had some food and a few arrows inside, but nothing more. So we left and continued our adventure. We searched all the way to the edges of the island, and as morning broke on day 34, this happened. Oh, there's some light here. Oh, there's someone there. There's literally someone stood there. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Just hide behind these trees. Is he on his own? It looks like it. I'm pretty sure he is. What's he doing? He's just in a furnace? I think so. Oh, oh, there's someone literally right behind him. I think he saw us. He just ran back into the thing. Oh, and there's another one there. Let's just get out of here. I don't want to cause any trouble here. They seem alright. This team seemed small. They had no real base and weren't causing any trouble. So instead of starting a fight with them, we continued our search through the forest and back into the jungle. As we ran, we spotted some more signs of life. A tree house suspended in the air. We couldn't see any players around here and it looked as though it was destroyed. So we just continued running through the jungle. Until finally... We had reached the compound that we saw a while back. We kept our distance and spotted a few players inside. They were in full diamond armor, and that was not a fight we wanted to pick when we had no idea how many of them were inside of those walls. So with that in mind, we slipped away into the jungle and started making our way home. That player that tried to attack me could be living there, but for now, he's safe. After a long walk, on day 36, we arrived back home to see a group of people had stormed our base. Since we all left on this adventure, we had nobody at the base watching out, which allowed them to just walk in and take over completely. We had no idea how many of them were inside of our walls now, currently looting through our chests and stealing our items. But one thing we did know was that it was time to fight for our base. If we can just sneak up to the wall a little bit, we may just be able to wait here and then we'll just be able to attack them. As soon as they come out, we'll be able to get a sneak attack. Hopefully, maybe kill a few of them. We stood waiting outside of these walls for quite a while, even to the point that it started turning night. But as the darkness took over, one of their players arrived at the door and now it was our time to strike. At most, there's six. Oh, there's, there's, a guy, there's, there's a guy that he sees us. He sees us. Bernardino, I think. Where? Outside. Outside. Behind us, behind us. Behind us. Should we get him? Get him. Oh, get we him. came in from. Yeah, push him, push him, push him. Oh, the whole team's coming. Oh, run, 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 run. run, run. He oh died. My. He died. He died. He died. He died. He died. He died. Oh my God, bro! There's so many of them. Are they all following? Yeah. I killed one. I killed one. Nice. What nice job, doing? Barry. Oh, the, the body's on the floor. Hey, let's go. Let's push it. Push it. We killed two. Hit another one. There's Hit so many of them. He's weak. He's weak. Oh, there is a lot of them. They're trying to loot the bodies. I'm going to pop a golden apple and rush it. Alright, I'll do it again.
We battled all night, and with two kills already in the bag, we decided it was time to run. More of their members kept arriving, and we were heavily outnumbered. But we managed to get to the river and escape, and luckily dolphins spawned in, and once we were away, they had no chance of catching us. We stayed hidden in the mountains for a short period of time. We had no idea what was happening at our base, until out of nowhere, we were contacted by one of the rival tribe's members. He explained how several people in their team were not happy with how their leader was taking over, and they wanted to join us and help take them down. This was huge. We had to decide as a team whether this was a trick to get us back and killed, or if this was a real offer to have somebody working for us on the inside. After some thought, we agreed to meet their member. We had nothing to lose. He told us that they had left and he was still hiding inside of one of the houses, so if we could sneak in, we would be able to meet up with him. Alright, the coast looks clear. He's in that house, I can see his name there. Just, we need to be very careful because if he isn't alone, we're just going to walk into a house full of these guys now and we're just going to get killed. Is he okay? Shield up. All right, he looks alright, he seems to be... Okay, yeah, come on, come on over. What do you want to do with it? There's a name name behind you, behind you. It just, it just, right, it, it, you see it? By like where the dock would be. Stay in the roof. He's not killing us, but I don't know if he's told him that we're, we're here. here. Yeah. If, if we can get rich in this call ASAP, then we can figure out what the hell is going on here. As we were talking with their member, they came back. They had surrounded the village and we were starting to think that this guy was not helping us. We stayed silent inside of the roof and luckily didn't get found. It Rich was a good guy, covering for us and making sure that nobody saw us. And thankfully, after a few minutes, we were able to get him inside of our call to explain what was going on. Hello? Hi. What is going on? Um, so they found your base. Yeah, uh, yeah and they want to kill you. You're <laughs> working kind of undercover, right? Yup. Do they know you've changed sides yet? No. <laughs> okay, right. You go down first. Yeah, you just walk out. Let us know when it seems clear to go to the door, and then we're just gonna have to sprint. You can't use okay. this, it's all, it's all being burnt down, so watch out. Oh, they're burning it down? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, they're they are. Down. They're burning the whole village down. You ready? Yeah, I'm good. Oh, oh ducks, and ducks, right behind me. He's outside I'm the running. I'm running out. Yep. Yeah, come on, come on, follow me, follow me. We escaped. Our enemies spotted us leave, but before they could catch us, we were gone. Our spy had saved our lives and told us some very valuable information, but as we ran through the jungle, he was killed. They found out he had betrayed them and it came at the cost of his life. Today, we lost our first and newest member, but we didn't have enough time to say goodbye to him because we had two more people that wanted to change sides waiting for us at their old compound. As we arrived, I saw two dead bodies of the enemy tribe. Our new team members had killed some of our enemies and before they came back for revenge against us, we set this place alight and snuck away into the jungle. Our team was growing day by day and this tribe was finally starting to face some consequences for their actions. But they burnt down our village and now we were homeless. We had to start rebuilding. And on day 40, we found this new location deep into the jungle. A small clearing right next to the coast. A perfect spot to settle down and prepare for our revenge. Even though this house didn't take long to build, some members of the team wanted their own individual houses so that we were spread out. As they started building their houses, me and Barry decided to head back to the old village on some horses to see if anything was left behind that we could bring back to our new village. Once we arrived, we were able to salvage a few pieces from the chest, but all the valuables were gone. So with this place cleared out, we decided to stop by the enemy compound on the way home to see if they had moved back in. As expected, this place was now completely abandoned, which also meant that this team had cleared us out of our own base and ran away into the unknown to hide after doing so. We had no idea at all where they were, and the longer we waited to find them, the stronger they would rebuild. If I wanted a fighting chance of surviving in this war against them, I would need to step up my game. The best way for me to seem stronger would be to upgrade my armor one final time, to netherite. Which meant it was time for the nether. As everyone knows by now, netherite is hit and miss. You either find a load at once or you find absolutely none. Luckily, I was able to find quite a bit on this adventure, which was more than enough for me to upgrade all of my armor and even one of my weapons. From the nether, I also got a load of gold, which meant if I got some apples, I could upgrade them and make me even stronger. 
So after chopping trees for a few days, I got enough apples for the gold I had, and now I was all stocked up and ready. All we needed to do now was find our enemies and finish this battle. With that in mind, as a team we ventured out, this time leaving two people back at the base, because we learned the hard way that you should always keep somebody on guard. We explored for a long time, and eventually late into the night, deep into the jungle, we spotted a group of players running around on the spawn island. Somehow, we were able to stay hidden in the jungle all night and into the next day without being seen, just watching these guys move around as a team. We continued to follow them until eventually night fell again, and as we carried on sneaking through the bushes, we spotted that one of their members had branched off from the rest of their team and was alone in the middle of the jungle. It was now or never, we had to strike against this guy and take him out. As soon as we ran at him, he spotted us and started to run. He was outnumbered and it was only a matter of time before we caught him. Eventually, he stood still and accepted his fate. He knew it was too late and there was nothing he could do. Once he was down, we looted his body as quick as possible and then ascended up into the trees. We knew that eventually the group that he branched away from would come back and try and avenge his death. And if they spread out looking for his body, it would be even easier to kill them one at a time. So now all we had to do was wait. It didn't take long until our pieces fell right into place. Another one of their members walked right through the clearing in front of us. We slowly climbed down from the trees and started to plan our attack, but before we knew it, he seemed to be running. If they saw us, their entire team would be here soon to help defend him. So it was now or never once again. We had to chase him down. Does anybody have eyes on him? I don't see him. I'm just running towards the coast now. I can see our base. It's, I'm pretty, yeah, it's just here. Oh, you see him? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, he's on the coast, he's on the coast. That's you guys behind him. Nice, okay, right, just get... As many hits in as you can. I'm going to try and hit him back towards you. He's, he's going for the water. Right, my depth, my depth strider's got him here. He's got no chance unless he has it. Come on. There's another hit. Nice. Okay, see if I can get another one in. Boom, there we go. He's got to be dead nearly. Come on, this is it. This is it. There we go. Nice. All right, okay, give me that bucket. Boom, there we go. Grab the water. Oh, one down. He was down. Another one of our enemies picked off when they were alone. Their team was starting to crumble day by day, and now with us being unsure how many remained, we had to get some answers. So after dropping off all of our loot gained from the enemy's bodies, we started searching the island once again to try and find any signs of life. The four biomes on this island are vastly different, with the swamp and plains being much easier to search than the jungle and the forest. So as expected, this took a while before we came across anything. But on day 70, as we walked along the beaches, we spotted a sugarcane farm and started to investigate. As we approached closer, we saw this place was guarded by a wall. And as we were unsure if there was any players inside, we made the quick decision to climb the largest tree that we could find to try and get a better view of this place. It took a long time to get up here, but it was worth it. The view allowed us to see their entire base. And just as we thought this place was clear, we spotted a player walking just around the outside of the walls. He was too far away to see a name, so we didn't want to attack straight away in case it wasn't one of the enemies that we were after. But as we approached, we were ready for the worst. I don't... I don't know, I do see a name there. Okay, I was just about to say I don't see anyone. Who is that? I can't see it properly. Where's he? Oh, he's, he's got away. He's, he's made a run for it. Who was that? I don't even know who that was. I can't even... I can't hit them. They're long gone. Right, let's just get inside. What is in this place? Who is this? Yomi. We got Dark. Okay, so this... These, these are the guys then. What's in here? Oh, a load of iron. Let me grab all of that. Grab this uh, enchantment table here as well. Let's grab the pickaxe. Boom. There we go. Okay, well, so they just abandoned this. Let's take everything. Why are they... Where are they going? There wasn't much in this base, and the players that were here were long gone at this point. They disappeared well into the distance, so we decided to take cover back up the tree and call the rest of the team to meet us. If they got away in boats and followed the coast, all we had to do was do the same on land to see if we could find them. 
Once the whole team arrived, the group felt strong and we set off to hunt these guys down. We followed the coast all the way to our old base, which worked perfectly. The coast does look clear. I don't see anyone. Just keep your eyes peeled in case somebody shows up. Oh, there's someone in the water. Oh, he's shooting at us. Chase him. Who, the, who is that? That must have been the guy who left earlier. Just see if we can shoot him. Shoot him. Try and break the boat if you can. Oh, yes, I got it. I got it. Right, let's chase him. Get him while he's in the water. I've got depth fryer. I'll see if I can chase him. We had found one of their guys, and most importantly, it was their leader. So as I dived into the water, I knew my depth strider boots would give me the edge on this guy. He's got no chance. I'm closing in on them a little bit. He's trying to loop back. He doesn't have a boat, though, so I'm just going to be able to destroy him with these depth strider boots. Oh, he's turning back. He's going to try and hit. Okay, he's getting one hit off. He's going back to the water, though. Or to the land, sorry. Let's see if we can narrow it down a little bit. If he just keeps running, his team might try and loop back. Oh, he's eating it. He's going slow. He's going slow. There's one hit. Come on. We got this. Yes. He was the team leader. Their team leader was finally down. And even though their remaining members were able to escape into the distance, they had no leader anymore. So with the hopes that their team would create an internal conflict over deciding a new leader, our team headed home in triumph. Most of our enemies were down, and now we had a short period of time left until this challenge was over. As a team, we decided to play it safe. Instead of spending our final hours hunting down the enemies, we wanted to develop our land and try and build our team even stronger. So when we arrived home, we got to work on securing our land, which once again meant we needed to build a wall around this place. I was back on mining duty gathering all of the stone for our team to use for building, and once the wall was finished, it looked a bit plain, so a few of our members decided to join me and head out to grab some oak wood to spice it up a little bit. Whilst we were out chopping, we spotted a group of players walking through the jungle. But these weren't just any players. These were the remaining players of the enemy tribe, and as they fled into the jungle to hide, one of their members was left behind, and with an opportunity like this, we had to take it. Let's just follow them and see if we can pick one off like we did a few days ago. If uh, if one of them like falls back, we'll get him. Is this... was, he only, was that a guy there? Oh, there is! There is one! I knew there would be! Does he like it? I think he's lagging. This is perfect. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, we got him here. There's no chance he's getting away. He's finished. Come on, double check we're not... Okay, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Keep your eyes out. Even though this trip was only meant for wood, we managed to add another kill to the list along the way. And with only five days remaining, when we arrived home, we got straight back to work. With all of the wood we had, we were able to finish off our wall and make this place finally look good. But as we thought the threats were gone, and we would be able to comfortably make it to day 100, our team spotted some players lurking in the jungle. We decided to act like we couldn't see them to make sure that we weren't going to attack people that weren't here to attack us. We waited and waited and waited. And they didn't make a move. When we started to think that these players weren't our enemies and were just curious players on the server, that was when they started to attack. We were ambushed from the ocean. A few of their members snuck in from the back and started setting our place on fire. We were breached, and now we had a battle on our hands for a base that we really wanted to defend. He's right inside! Here he is, Lacuna! Wait, there he goes, there he goes, right, grab him, grab him. He's, he's on, he's got netherite chest plate on, yeah, this guy. Oh, he's setting fire to things! Quick, let's see if we can get him done before he but Oh, this whole place is burning, right, he's down. Try and put out some of that fire if possible. Is there any more in here? Their team stuck in pairs this time, and eventually they took it back into the ocean to try and fight us in the water. Our team assembled on boats and set out to attack. The chase was on. Right, just hop in boats and see if we can chase them. I don't know how far they're going to try and go, but let's just see where we can go with this. If we can kill any more, this will be great right at the end. The longer we paddled in the boats, the less likely we would be able to catch them. But we stayed persistent and continued to follow. We travelled across the entire island. The boats were too slow and I knew that if I wanted to kill this guy, I would have to cut him off. So I bailed and headed across the land on foot. Right, where did he go? Is he... Oh, there he is! Right, he got out of the boat. He's coming across. He's, he's trying to loop back around. Turn around on the boat. Turn around on the boat. I should be able to get a hit off just before he gets into the water. Oh, he's putting a boat down. Oh, he missed it! He missed the boat! Oh, he's done for. This step strider is going to help me so much. Come on. Surely he's going to be dead now. There we go! The last one- he was the last one! Our mission was finally complete. As far as we knew, we had killed all of our enemies, 
And as their bodies floated back out into sea, our team could return home in victory over the team that we now knew as the I can't believe it's not Butter Republic. On this island, there were still places we hadn't explored yet. Teams we hadn't encountered, but throughout this adventure, they had stayed safe, quiet and caused no conflict, meaning that as well as us, they were able to survive for 100 days in Hardcore Minecraft. So from me to you, I hope you enjoyed watching my perspective of the Tribal Civilization experiment. I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.